In part one of this little mini series of upgrading Hornby tankers, we first of all stripped it, the model down and then reassembled the chassis first of all into a vacuum brake version and then into an air brake version. In this part two, we'll look at the tank barrels. We'll also do painting and decal decoration and I'll also do uh, a rundown of the costs to see if I can get under the half price cost of a brand new Backman one which was the original challenge on this. Once dismantled the barrel should fall into two pieces once you've taken the walkway and the ladder off. This one had neither. Then after removing the stickers decals I used some strip magic to remove the rest of the printed artwork. A little bit of a soak in some nice warm soapy water cleans them up ready for the next stage filling the holes in the barrel. For the bigger holes I used some offcuts of plastic card glued on the inside then on the outside it was filler for all of the holes. There's several different fillers on the market these days they all do pretty much the same thing. Knowing that they were going to get painted at the end I had them all lined up on the bench and it was time to put the two halves together and my devious nature got the better of me and I started putting the wrong halves together. <laughs> my preferred glue of choice for this sort of work is EMA Plastic Weld. It's quite an aggressive solvent. It's also not cheap so I tend to put it in my homemade stabilisation bucket so that I don't knock it over which has happened on quite a few occasions. Some of these wagons can be a little bit old and the plastic can be a little bit brittle but with EMA it's quite an aggressive uh, solvent so you can actually if you squeeze it the two halves together it actually forms its own little bit of filler that then sets hard and you can then file that flat. Newer, newer plastic is a little softer and it's a lot easier to do. Talking of filing, let's make a mess. We'll use sanding sponges and files to get most of it off and then we'll give it a quick coat of paint to reveal where it needs adjusting, fill again and then repaint. All this painting, filling, filing, repainting, filling, we have to make sure that we don't destroy any of the moulded details like the rings around the a barrel because we'll be using that in the next step. Now it's quite possible I might come in for a little bit of flack for using Stenson Models excellent etch walkways on a Hornby model but uh, well you know as I explained at the beginning of part one Two of these wagons had no walkways when I acquired them and none of them had ladders which has left me no option but to replace them with something. With the etches cleaned up and removed from the sprue it's time to break out the folding tool again. These etches are quite delicate and I'm sure it might be possible to do this without a bending tool, but it's a damn sight easier with one. Having said that though, I did have to use some flat, thin pliers to get two of the pieces bent into position. Once it's bent up and formed into its proper shape, I did then solder the corners just to give it a bit of strength. Now that the walkway is ready to be attached to the barrel, Stenson models do provide a downloadable template you can print off for all the variants of what they do. This is an excellent guide to where to drill the holes to affix it to the barrel. Remember a moment ago I said about not erasing the detail, the lines on the printed paper line up with that detail to help you get it into the correct position. Now unfortunately for me I snapped the drill that is recommended in the instructions so I had to use the next size up which was sort of helpful in a way because when it came to installation it was like trying to thread 14 needles at the same time. 
Before fixing into place though, I did give them a quick coat of Halfords Grey Primer, followed by a thin coat of black paint on the underside, because that would be the most difficult part to get to once installed. Like I said, the next stage wasn't easy at all, and eventually, after many cursed words, it sat down into the correct position and started to look very nice indeed. I then had to deal with the ladder issue and this was probably the most difficult task of this whole build. It was a little bit fiddly and a little bit time consuming and it did try my patience a little bit but it should be well within the capabilities of your average modeler. This is one way of dealing with this problem. The other way is to opt for a different style of walkway that has an etched ladder included. There was no paper template for this one, just a list of coordinates that, that needed to be transferred from the instructions onto the tank barrel end. Doing this variation also gave me the opportunity to have different styles of tank walkway. It also played into the fact that I'd already made two different types of chassis, an air brake version and a vacuum brake version. This project is turning into one of those that on the face of it looks pretty straightforward and a fairly quick one to do. But the amount of handrails and all the other bits and pieces was really time consuming and I still haven't properly finished them all off yet. That's probably one of the downsides of batch building and also having to be at work all the time. Eventually though, after many hours of looking through my magnifying glass, I had eight models that were ready to go to paint. With our two styles of chassis, vacuum and air, and two styles of walkway, we're now going to have two different types of barrel. That will be class A, grey, and class B, black. For the grey colour, I used rail grey with a few drops of dark grey mixed in. And for the black, it was just normal satin black. So what's the difference between class A and class B? Well, that's a very good question and I'm glad you asked. The shortened and simplified explanation would be to say that from almost the beginning, petroleum products that were carried in rail tank wagons were split into two categories. Those with a low flash point that would ignite easily were carried in light coloured wagons and those that had a high flash point that wouldn't ignite easily were carried in dark uh, coloured wagons. From the early 1960s, the livery of the wagons were Class A grey with red sole bars and Class B black. The inception of the Haschem symbols and boards in the late 1970s rendered the colouring of wagons obsolete, which is why in the mid-80s all sorts of colours started to spring up, and in the modern day even more so. Of the eight wagons that I acquired, three of them didn't have a weight, so I had to make one out of my lead supply. The way this model is designed in model form is in the clip together concept. This is okay on some wagons, but on this one it tends to bend the body into an arch and it's very visible. This might raise a few eyebrows as well. So what I did was snip the locating pins off on one end, cleaned up the top of the chassis and with some Revel contactor glue, glued the barrel into place with the aid of some masking tape to strap it all down into the correct position. To get all the transfers at the same height on all of the wagons, I made a rudimentary thing and with a sharp pencil scribed some very light lines on the wagon. The fast traffic stars and numbering were supplied via Fox transfers. There's pretty much no limit to the amount of decoration that you want that you can put on these wagons, depending on which era and which model prototype that you're working to. For me, 
That's the mid to late 1970s, when many of the owner hirers of these wagons were removing their company logos, which leads to some very interesting weathering effects, as we'll see in the next video. The original goal that I set myself on this little challenge was to see if I could make a Hornby tank wagon look as good as a Backman one for less than half the price. Did I manage it? Well, let's have a look. Each wagon cost me about £5. The etched walkways and ladders cost me £6.75. Replacement wheel sets were £17.95 for a pack of 10, which equates to £3.59 for a pair. A pack of 40 brass bearing cups cost me £3. You need four per wagon, that equals to 30 pence a wagon. The styrene strip and rod I used multiple of, but when I worked out how much I'd actually used it come to around 40 pence. With careful number selection, plus the fast traffic stars, the transfers worked out at 96 pence per wagon, but you, that could escalate if you wanted more decoration. Did I get under half price? No, not quite. Did I have fun? Obviously. Was it worth the £10 saving? Probably not. Reflections? I probably should have used brass rod f for the brake shoe hangers. It won't be the next video that I put out, but part three of this mi little mini-series will be weathering. That's so long as it turns out how I want it to. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.